today and show you a few things that my husband put in my Christmas stocking for my sewing room. These are all things that I asked for. I always make my husband an Amazon wish list for my Christmas <laughs> shopping list for him. He of course gives me some surprises too, but he also enjoys being able to just click down the list and add to cart. So I had picked out a few gadgets and things sewing related that I asked for and he came through. And I'm gonna show you five things today that he got me for Christmas. These are all new things that I had never tried before. Some of them I really love, some of them I'm not so sure of yet, but I'll be sure and put links to all of them in the description for sure, of course, for you. So before we get started, make sure you go ahead and su subscribe. I have a brand new tutorial coming up very soon for Valentine's Day. Well, it's a heart, so you can make it any time of year, really. But I'm really excited about that one, so you don't want to miss that, so go ahead and click subscribe. You can also check out all the other sewing stuff on my blog at pincutsostudio.com and find me on Instagram at pincutso. So let's get started. The first thing is these shore grips. Because my cutting table is kind of tall, I can't always bear down enough on my cutting, on my ruler to get it to not shift around when I'm trying to cut. So I asked for some of these shore grip things. And what they do is they go on the back of your cutting ruler so that you have an easier time gripping the ruler without it sliding around. So I have not opened these yet. This is my favorite brand of ruler, the Olipfa. I have two of this brand and they're my most used. This one I really need to replace. I'll put links to this brand down below in the description because I have some other, some Fiskars ones, but I always go back to these ones. I like the size of this. I like that it has the angles. And then this one, it's cool because it has a lip edge, so it goes on the edge of my cutting mat so that it's straight. So that also helps it not slide around. I'm not gonna put dots on that one yet because I'm hoping to replace it and I don't wanna waste these. So there's no instructions. Oh look, they're like um, silicone maybe? Easily applies to the back of any ruler or template. It doesn't say where exactly to put them, so I guess I'll just guess. Make sure I put it on the back, obviously. This is the back of my ruler. I'm just gonna take a few off. And put them on the corners, I guess. So you can use the quarter inch ones too. Maybe I'll just put the quarter inch dots in the middle. It says they will not raise the cutting ruler off the mat. And I'll put one here. Okay, let me get a scrap. Oh, see, I think I need one. Ooh, that's nice, because they stick to my cutting mat, too. Ooh, I can already tell this is great. Usually I have to really push down hard on my ruler, and just then I was barely pushing down at all because the grips are keeping it in place. So these are a definite winner. I'll link you to these for sure in the description. These are all affiliate links, FYI. But I will only recommend things that I actually really love. And these are great. Definitely want to add them to the rest of my rulers after I replace my big one. So the next thing is, it's funny because I opened this and I was like, what is this? I don't even remember. And I had to remind myself because it didn't come with any packaging, which is weird. But it's this quarter inch seam tape and it's supposed to help you make half square triangles. I took a little video of it in use. Usually when you make half square triangles, you know, like you would for a quilting project. Actually, I'll just give you a sneak peek of this upcoming tutorial I have. So this right here is a half square triangle and it makes two at a time. And usually you need to draw a pencil line on, you put this, let's see, I didn't cut two. You would put two squares right sides together and you draw a pencil line diagonally here and then you stitch a quarter inch from either side of the pencil line. But to avoid having to draw all those lines and to get more accurate results, you can put this tape on your sewing machine. So the red line is where your needle line is. Then you just run the corner of your half of your square along the blue side. So it did take some getting used to. I didn't have perfect results the first try, but it worked really well after I got the hang of it. Another thing to note is that the bigger your squares, if you have really big half squares, this is not gonna work because you, this can only stick as far as your machine comes out. So 
It only works with the smaller squares. However, I was sewing all of these small squares together for this project, and I realized that this seam tape was really helpful to keep my quarter inch seams perfect because my machine that I was using doesn't actually have a very good marking for the quarter inch line, and I don't have a quarter inch foot for that particular machine. So the tape actually really helped keep my quarter inch seams on track. So for quilting and quarter inch seams, I do definitely recommend this. For half square triangles, I might use it. I might just continue to draw my pencil lines. We'll see. But I do think it was handy for the quarter inch seams, so I'll link to that below. My next one is, I haven't even opened this yet. It's a drawstring threader. And this is for when you are threading elastic through projects, or if you're threading drawstrings through. So that says drawstring, but I have seen people use this for elastic too. So let's see, it says may not work on casings with small eyelet openings. That makes sense because it has to be big enough for this to come through. Okay, so it says thread drawstring through either eye or weave through both eyes to hold tightly. Okay, so I have a scrap piece of elastic right here. So it looks like I would thread it through here and here to hold it more tightly. And then insert the blunt end of threader into the casing. Okay, so I can see how this would really work well. If I get it, oh look, it does not come out. Well, I guess it might, but I'm pulling it through this way. So hopefully it would hold it securely enough that it wouldn't come out. I'm wondering if it would also help it not get twisted or if the twisting would be worse. I'm not sure. I'll report back probably on my blog or on Instagram when I have actually tried this on a project. So maybe this will be easier, maybe it won't. It looks like it also came with some tweezers, but they're tweezers with grips. Because you know how when you lose the end of your elastic in your pants, does this happen to your kids and your husband all the time? This will make it easier to re-grab your elastic. I assume that's what this is for. Okay, my last two things are kind of similar things. This is a specific foot for my sewing machine. And I think this, I don't know if you've seen my quilting tutorials that when I attach a chopstick to the side of my sewing machine to get perfect one inch lines on my quilt projects. This attaches to my sewing machine and it will, it can extend out to one inch, I think. It can extend out to one and an eighth. So that's as far as it goes. But I make a lot of projects with one inch quilting lines. So I think this will be really nice. I think this is the one inch mark. So here's my, here's where my needle goes. And then this, I can just stitch one line of stitching and then I can use this to run my previous line of stitching through. And so it's a perfect inch away. I think this will be really, really useful. And it's specific to my machine. So you'll have to look for one that fits your machine. My machine is a faff but I know they make these for all kinds and I'll try to link to a few of them below. This is something similar and I'm not sure how handy this will be. It's a magnetic seam guide. So it won't work on a quilt project because this actually attaches or magnet magnetizes to your sewing machine so that you can sew a larger seam by running it alongside here. So if your machine doesn't have very clear markings, this will be useful. However, it does only stick as far as your metal throat plate goes. It does not stick to the rest of your sewing machine. Even though my fafs are older and they are all metal, it does not stick to the part outside my metal throat plate. So you're supposed to, if you're sewing curves, you can place the smaller end at, on your mark and you can use that to sort of guide your curve. So we'll see if I ever use this, but I think it could be really helpful, especially for beginners or if you're teaching kids, then it, this could be helpful for them to learn. One word of caution is to be careful with magnets. These aren't very strong magnets, so I think it'll be okay. But some machines, especially computerized ones, a magnet can really mess with them. So if you're using any magnets around your machine, make sure you're using magnets that are sold in the sewing section. So that includes things like this magnetic pin cushion. My mom was using like one of the more industrial, 
metal bowls that you can get the hardware store to collect like bolts and screws and things. And it started to mess with her sewing machine because, you know, magnetic poles and science and that kind of stuff. So um, just be cautious of that. If you do notice any anything going wrong with your computerized sewing machine, you might want to avoid the magnet. But I don't see this being strong enough to really do that. But it is something to be aware of. So I think that's everything. I will definitely report back on the ones that I'm unsure of, like the elastic threader. And to see, to tell you if I end up using them a lot, if I feel like there's something worth buying. But definitely, definitely the grips. And I really do like these. And I think this would be my third pick. So yeah, I hope that was helpful for you. There's always more sewing toys to enjoy. <laughs> and I'll be back very soon with a Valentine's tutorial for you. Bye.